Hi, let's talk about social media and innovation. My name is Frank Piller. I'm Professor for Technology and Innovation Management at RWTH Aachen University, a large university of technology in Germany. Together with my co-authors, Debbie Roberts from the University of Nottingham and Dirk Lütkens, also here in Aachen, an Assistant Professor of Innovation Management, we reached out to study how is the relationship between using social media to gather information and innovation performance. So let's look into the topic a little bit more deeply. We have a lot of examples in the press and on the internet how companies benefit from social media. There's a famous idea storm by Dell, where the computer company Dell reaches out and gathers input from its users for new software and new computers. My Starbucks idea is a famous contest where people submit new recipes, ideas for new products, but also comment on existing products, so continuously improving the assortment of Starbucks. Recently, Vodafone in Germany launched the Connected X Challenge to co-create the future of narrowband Internet of Things. And all these examples have in common that they use social media sites to connect to users. And this can lead to very high results. Nivea, owned by Bayersdorf, a German cosmetic company, launched one of its most successful products, the deodorant Invisible or Black and White, by just stealing, so to say, copying what they saw from users on the internet, reverse engineering it and bringing it to markets. So there's some kind of this anecdotal evidence that social media matters for innovation. In our research, the three of us reached out to really try to understand is social media just this rich source of external knowledge for innovation, but does it really um, link also to higher innovation performance? And in our study, we focus on two kinds of information you can get from social media. The one is market knowledge, so-called need information, what you need to really address the open problems of user or customer group, and technical knowledge, solution information to really turn that needs then into a product or new service. We also, as business school professors always like to do, we're looking at some contingencies and moderators um, between the relationship between social media, information gathering and innovation performance. We had access to a unique data set, the so-called PDMA Comparative Performance Assessment Study. PDMA is one of the largest associations for um, professionals in innovation management. And every couple of years they reach out to gather feedback from their professional members about best practices in innovation. And recently a special issue of the Journal of Product Innovation Management has been published where all the authors look into different brackets of this data set to identify new best practices. And our paper on social media and innovation is part of this volume. So the empirical base for our study is a benchmarking survey of 453 companies across the globe equally in B2B and B2C, with the majority being larger companies. So, what were we looking for in particular? Previous literature has suggested that social media users should improve innovation performance. Why? Well, there's this big school of open innovation literature by Chesborough and others. The outside-in perspective saying if you reach out and get information from a diverse set of external partners and you really search not just in your common um, periphery of your firm but you really reach out, then you should be a better innovator. So our base hypothesis is that social media is positively related to innovation performance. However, especially Lawson and Salter reminded us that sometimes there can be too much of a good thing, that some companies may overuse these new sources and so you ha may have a negative effect. This is why we propose that the relationship between using social media sources to gather information and innovation performance is curvy linear, takes an inverted U shape. And as I said earlier, in our study we distinguish between information um, about customer needs and information about technical solutions, both which we propose are positively related to innovation performance. Fourthly, 
we think you have to do it in a structured ways. And pre meaning previous research has shown that there are strong complementarities between new IT technologies and organizational structures or processes of a firm. And Lawson and Foss, for example, have shown that new HR practices are most conductive to innovation performance when adopted not in isolation, but as a system of mutually reinforcing practices. And we believe that the same should be true for social media sources. So if you only look for need information or if you only look for solution information, that should be not as beneficial as if you really um, look for both at the same time. So we propose this complementarity effect. And finally, it also matters how you do it. Previous research in innovation management has shown that formalization is a very important driver of innovation success. That you formalize the activities you do in your innovation process. That you really build a corresponding internal structure. This has been shown in lots of the open innovation literature. As without formalization, this external search and integration would suffer from being disorganized, sporadic, uh, ineffective, as these two authors outlined. So, as our last hypothesis, we propose that a highly formalized innovation processor, together with the simultaneous use of social media to acquire need and solution information, will lead to higher innovation performance. So, we built a big statistical model using the PDMA performance assessment data. We crunched a lot of um, data that came together here, but Debbie, please come and tell our audience what all this data means and what we finally found. Hello, I'm Deborah Roberts from the University of Nottingham. I'm one of Frank's colleagues. As Frank has said, there is lots and lots of data around this. But what does all this mean? What do our findings actually mean? <clears throat> OK. Basically, it, using social media for innovation to extend open innovation search is far from simple. There is no quick win. We find that scanning social media can lead to better market knowledge, but however, it does have a strong negative effect for technical solution knowledge. There are, however, complementary effects between using social media at the front end for market information and at the back end to gather solution information. We also find that formalization of the innovation process in general helps. However, managing social media is very different from managing open innovation relationships. And just having a Facebook page or a Twitter account will not suffice. We need more than that. We need a social media innovation strategy. We also need to develop new skills and new capabilities. So, let's talk about this. We use the metaphor of a summer camp where children go to learn and explore. And we suggest that managers need to learn three different skill sets at three different camps. Let's look at our first camp, Camp Explore. At Camp Explore, managers learn to read the signals that have been generated from these large, disconnected, diverse pools of user-generated content. And they learn to identify market trends, to generate customer insights, and to extend the breadth and depth of search. Here, managers will learn skills, new skills in computational techniques data analytics, machine learning, sentiment analysis. These are the typical skills of data scientists, but at the same time, they still have to be social scientists to make sense out of these insights. The second camp where managers can go is what we call Camp Co-Create. Here they go to learn to engage and co-create with customers in the innovation process. They can do this via ideation contests, Facebook apps, etc. Here they will learn to develop collaborative skills. They will become facilitators, community managers, and learn to manage the creative process. Here they will learn to engage and, importantly, select the right participants to work with. They'll also need to learn how to motivate these people and to develop incentives to engage them. 
Another thing they will do here is that to use, learn to use creative problem solving techniques to help them co-create. Then the final camp. The final camp we called Camp Communicate. Camp Communicate is very important, particularly at the later stage of innovation. Here they will learn to develop um, marketing, innovative marketing communication campaigns that help to generate awareness and to publicise the launch of any new product or service. At Camp Communicate, they will also learn how to connect and identify early adopters who may help them in the process. So here they will use social media to tell stories that resonate with the target market. So finally, once we have a strategy in place, we've learnt new skills, new capabilities, what does it finally mean? Well, social media, we believe, offers lots of opportunities for innovation, but it must be carefully managed. And to do that, we would like to suggest the need, uh, particularly in large organisations, for a corporate social media manager. The manager can be responsible to align the different strategies and different tools and develop a coherent social media strategy across the various departments. They would also be responsible for managing relationships with both external users and contributors, but also amongst the different colleagues in the different departments who are using social media. We've given you a brief flavour and summary of our research and we'd like to ask you to connect with us um, on the various Twitter and email accounts and we'd also very much like you to read our full papers at the Journal of Product Innovation Management and in MIT Sloan Management Review. Thank you.